Julian was also producing Alice Cooper's new record at the time, so he got Alice fucking Cooper to do a spoken word intro for the album, which we now had a name for. The Great Melenko. Melenko. The fourth Joker's, Joker's card. Joker's we had about enough of this L.A. showbiz crap, but we still had Alice Cooper to go. So Julian and I took the one-hour flight to Phoenix to get Alice Cooper off the golf course so he could do the intro to the Great Malenko album at some studio we were at in Arizona. Once again, I was nervous as fuck because I didn't know shit about Alice Cooper either. That really sucked, because I knew he was supposedly the shit, but I didn't know the first fucking thing about him. Alice Cooper is notorious for golf, right? That's all I knew. Well, he came into the studio fresh off the golf course. In his fucking golf clothes, he pulled up in a fucking golf cart, and his hair was in a nice ponytail. It was shiny, glossy, he must use Prell. I flash back to my caddying days. It was as if I was caddying for a preppy witch. That's what Alice Cooper looked like. A preppy witch. Hey, Julian, Alice said. Then Julian introduced me. Alice, this is Joe Bruce. Nice to meet you, he said. Alice had a weak, feeble handshake, just like a wrestler. Wrestlers always give you these ginger-ass handshakes. It's like a wrestling code. They barely touch your hand. I fucking hated it. Don't dead fish me, motherfucker. I don't care if it's a wrestling code or not. Don't give me no feeble-ass fucking dead fish handshake. I don't want to just graze the skin of your palm. Fuck you. If you don't shake my hand like a man, eat a fucking dick. I may not have known shit about Alice fucking Cooper, but I can tell you after that, I knew he had a ginger ass handshake. Maybe he had hand surgery at one point, and he could only squeeze his fist so much. I don't know, so I might cut him some slack. Maybe he jacks off a lot, and his hand is sore. Who the fuck knows? So Alice put down his clubs long enough to put on some headphones and record the intro that I had written. I was actually coaching him from the sound booth. Me, Joe Bruce, Flube, and former pupil of Dr. Sophia, schooling fucking Alice Cooper on how to do our shit the way we wanted it. Ain't that the shit? What's this word? Malenko, he asked. It's shit. How was I going to define it? Can I explain to you what all this is, just so you know, I asked? Yeah, well, sure, Alice Cooper said, half annoyed. I sat down with Alice Cooper and started explaining what the Dark Carnival was in full detail. I told him all about the six Joker cards and everything. He really seemed to not give a fuck less. He was yawning. His eyes were rolling in the back of his head. He was texting. There wasn't even cell phones back then, but he was texting. He was totally fucking bored with every word I was saying. He was totally fucking annoyed. No lie. This is the fourth Joker's card, Alice. Each Joker's card is sort of like a mirror representing the listener. So you see yourself in six different reflections, and you have a chance to change yourself before the ending comes. You know, the Great Malenka was the fourth Joker's card, and blah, 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 blah. You know what? Somewhere in that golf addled mind of his, he understood everything. He went in there, and he fucking freaked the intro. Right after he finished, he was like, well, I'm back to the golf course. He grabbed his clubs, hopped back on his little rock and roll golf cart, and made his way out into traffic. By the way, that's no joke. He really was dressed in golf clothes and fresh from the course. It was funny as hell. Why is it that if you're golfing, you have to wear clown pants and a fuzzy gay sweater, yellow? Why is that? Even if you're wicked shit master Alice Cooper, He's still dressed like a total fucking metrosexual preppy with a ponytail and the face of a scary Halloween witch. <laughs> Two days later, Julian took us to Alice Cooper's concert in L.A. Lo and behold, to our surprise, Slash came out and started playing with him on stage wearing that same ass tired riddle box shirt. Our posse that night was Julian, Leaf Garrett, still wearing his tired ass riddle box hat, which probably stunk like sweat and beer for some reason. Billy was there, and also with us was fucking Pat Boone. Pat 
fucking boom was there watching Alice Cooper and Slash with us. Julian knew the weirdest fucking group of people you could ever imagine. If you don't know who Pat Boone is, fuck you. He's way before my time too, so I'm not going to explain it. We couldn't get out of there and back to Detroit quick enough.